Good morning. I'm uh, I'm coming in from uh, virtually. I'm from Manila, so it, uh, it's very late here in the Philippines. It's exactly twelve in the midnight, so I'm I'm not sleepy because I'm very excited to be here with you virtually at this uh, at this case. So my presentation it's it's about hacking your way to your first pen test gig. So I'm pretty sure there's a lot of pen testers or ethical hackers in the room already or joining this call virtually, but there may be some people as well who are just trying to get started. And my my goal is to help you identify what steps can you take. Is it even possible to learn pen testing if 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 I'm a, if I'm this old already? For example, I've been in the industry for quite a while. The answer is yes. Up front, the answer is yes. <laughs> So let's start a little about me. I'm a pen test consultant for a Fortune 100 company. It's based in the U.S. Uh, I'm also a master's student for the SANS Tech Institute. Uh, I'm also, as mentioned, I'm a member of Hackstreet Boys. We're a CTF team based in the Philippines. We're, uh, we joined a lot of CTFs, uh, and we're also participating in, in global CTFs. So we played in DEF CON, Red Team Village, and we had some success there. I'm also a member of a... Uh, advocacy group here in the Philippines where our aim is to provide trainings, free trainings, by the way, to individuals who are trying to get into cybersecurity. I know it's pretty hard to, to jump ship, pretty hard to change careers, and there's a lot of resources out there. Yes, that it's true. But at the same time, it's hard to pick, right? What, what Where do you really start with all of the resources out there? I have a few certifications out there, but those are just really letters, so let's jump into the content. So, First and foremost, if you want to do pen testing, you have to understand what is pen testing. So, uh, in, in, in there's a lot or many ways to define it. Uh, how I would define it, it's an authorized attempt to gain access to computer systems with the goal of improving the organization's security posture. So, there are key components here. One is an authorized attempt. So, you have to get prior approval to, to your customers that you are allowed to test it. And second, you should be able to provide value by improving their security posture. Now, you can do this by identifying potential paths to an attack or what an attacker can take so they can fix it before uh, b before the bad actors come in. It's also uh, what we call a point-in-time test. That means even though you've undergone pen testing for, for a few months ago or the last week, that test is as valid as this last week. Does it mean that you're going to be vulnerable for next week but that test is just valid for, for, for that time. So uh, what usually happens if, if you start being a pen tester, right? If you look at the image, he's, he's using his two hands, right? Left and right typing code. That's not actually what's happening, but, but that's as much to get with your foot photos. Uh, but as a pen tester, you get to hack most of the time, right? Uh, sorry to break it with you. You're not hacking all day. Most of the time you're hacking, but not all day. You're going to do some paperwork, you're going to maybe do some communications with your customer, defining the scope, helping them figure out what they really need to be what's really need to be tested with the assessment, and then even figuring out what they really want. You also have to communicate issues. Let's say do we we can't set this up. How can we establish connectivity? You have to communicate that with your customer. You also have to provide post-delivery support. Like if you deliver the report, which is the output of a pen test, you're about to support it with any questions or presentations that they may ask of you. So in a typical day, what usually happens, you're going to check your email when you wake up and you drink your coffee. You're going to hack a, a few hours, a few minutes, really depends on how your day is going. You're going to write as you go. Uh, that's the best way to do it, to write as you go when you do your reporting. Then you update your customer at the end of the day. Uh, most of the time, it doesn't happen, but really depends on your customer. You update them of what's usually ha uh, happening. So there's a lot of hacking if you want to be a pen tester. But, but the caveat is it's not just full day. It's not the whole day of pure hacking. So let's say you want to pursue that. You find that interesting. So you have potential career paths, right? Uh, you can either be an employee, you can join a big pen testing company and provide services to your customers. Let's say you have the skills, you get hired, you can do that. Or you can join your enterprise, uh, an enterprise or, or organization where you're already working for, and then provide internal applications, uh, test internal applications and systems. That's one way. Another is you can be a contractor. You can do pen tests for several for a period, maybe six months or three months, really depends. And you are paid per hour or by the hour. So the time you work on a project is how much you are being paid. Lastly, you can be a consultant on your own. You can think of it like you're running your own company. Most of firms, it's quite big now in pen testing, they all started with this one. And then 
they 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 have expanded. So you have you're going to be self-employed, but though you have to build your reputation within the community because customers or clients or organizations won't really trust you just because you're saying your name if they don't know anything about you. The, the, the benefit though is you have more control and you can have multiple clients and at the same time you can pick the projects that you want to work on. Right? If you're an employee, you're going to be handed a test, a project. You can't really de decline uh, most of the time uh, if you want to, if, if you don't want to work on that one. So several types of assessments, right? You have web applications, externals, internals assessments, right? Wireless mobile PT. Th th this is barely scratching the surface of what's usually out there. But when it, when it comes with frequency, web apps is the most common case, at least here in Asia. Uh, I think that's also the case here in, there in the U.S., but you're going to look for vulnerabilities in web apps. When you do an external pen test, you're trying to get initial access from the internet. Maybe get that foothold for an exploitable vulnerability, though we don't usually see that most of the time. What you usually see as initial access methods are phishing and social engineering. You can also do an internal pen test where you try to break into the Active Directory environment, look for misconfigurations, files, etc. And there's are the much more less common assessments as well, wireless and mobile at least. Uh, where you, you look for weaknesses in their wireless networks or mobile applications. Uh, what's interesting, though, is the product assessments. Uh, where you can look at IoT devices, uh, this is very smart devices, embedded devices, and then you can look for weaknesses or vulnerabilities in there. So it's very fun, a lot of things that you can do, uh, though you're most likely going to work with a lot of web apps. And usually the entry point when you want to do a pen test is, is to be, uh, to, if you want to be a pen tester, is to do web application assessments. But eventually, you'll be able to transition to other types. So how do you get started then, right? You find pen testing is very fun. You're okay with doing some reporting or some writing or communication a little bit of the day. It's okay with you not to hack all the, day, all, all, uh, all the time. So how do you get started? Personally, this is my personal opinion. You have to understand these three components, right? You have to have a fundamental understanding of computer networking, operating systems, and then a little knowledge of programming, scripting, or application development languages. What does, that mean? what does that mean? If you're looking at computer networking, can you answer the questions on the slide? If you ask yourself, you can answer that in three, in three sentences without much confusion, then you're in a better spot. Then you're in a good spot. If you're looking into operating systems, pretty sure if, you've, if you have no experience, right? You were quite used with using Windows, the interface with clickety buttons, with all the fancy icons. But if you start or want to do security or even pen testing for sure, you have to work on Linux systems. And for now, what you need to learn if you're starting out is to learn Linux. Uh, with, when it comes to programming and scripting application languages, you can pick, but if you want to script, you better start off with Python. Uh, there are other takes, but that's personally my take. You can start with an application development language, maybe a, maybe PHP, Java up to you, but come on, who really likes Java, right? But PHP is quite archaic anyway, but it's still being used. And I see still uh, that language in most of my assessments. What if you have prior experience? Maybe you've worked in IT before or you're already working in InfoSec. What I would recommend is if you want to do pen testing or even any job, right, uh, related to security, I highly recommend that you look into unfamiliar information security concepts. Why? If you're doing pen testing or security, or if you're working in a SOC, you're very familiar with the workflow of what are the terms or even the concepts that you need to have to do your work. But how about if you want to shift to another job, which you are not very familiar with, right? You have to look into what is a security control. If you're, if you're not a technical, if you are a very technical hands-on person, a security control may not be you may not be able to describe that the same as someone who's working in GRC, for example. You also need to understand what what is a red team, what is a blue team anyway, what is an incident responder. Why is this important? Well, it helps you build an understanding of the whole ecosystem of how InfoSec works, right? Because if we're a huge community, we, we can't just be siloed in what we do. What I also recommend if you want to get started, take trainings, right? I mean, these trainings, they, they are paid, but they all offer free content. You can, you can pick whatever you want. Me personally, I started with Hack the Box. Five years ago, if you ask me if I'll ever be in this phase or 
point of my career, my answer to you will be no. 100% full stop, no. But because of free trainings, I, I, I spent time working on it. I was able to get a job doing pen testing. So you're all familiar with this one. You can look at blog posts from SANS, uh, OFSEC, web, uh, if you want to do web pen testing, Port Swigger. Uh, the Web Security Academy is a very great resource. You can do Hack the Box or even Try Hack Me. Or even while you're in there in the conference, participate in the CTF. Attend the trainings, right? If you sign up for trainings or attend other uh, presentations as well. So the point here is just take trainings because it's going to be very impactful in your career. Certifications though. How about certifications? You want to do pen testing, but you don't have any certification. Well, in my personal opinion, it's not really a requirement, but it helps you get past at least the initial screening just to get that first interview. That's not always the case in my experience, but it will help you for sure. Now, I'm not saying that you it's a requirement, right? So at some point in your career, you may need a certification or your employer may require you to take one. It really depends on, on, on the career path that you are taking. So it's a great way to learn and put yourself to the test. However, just know that most people that you will see, the the, the Dave Kennedy's, John Strands, they, do, they don't need certifications anymore, right? Because their experience, the, the value that they provide to the community speaks for them out loud. So it's a good start. If, if you have nothing, like in, in my case, certification was, it was a very good route to take. So uh, what, one thing I'd like to mention as well, if you want to jump into your being a, a pen tester, is to set goals. I've tried this on my own when I was starting. I started with a simple daily goal. I look into the internet and what are the two things that are happening in Fosec today? I need just to be aware of it. Is there an ongoing beach? Is there a new exploit? Just two things. You can't look at everything because there's a lot of things happening, but just take a look at two things and then try to understand what's going on. Make, make a weekly goal. Maybe learn about TCP if you don't know that. Look into the RFC, what is a three-way handshake? and all of those things. Make a monthly goal such as participating in a CTF or a yearly goal, goal or quarterly goal of finishing an online course or passing a certification exam. It all depends on our time. We all have our lives. It's not that straightforward for most people. But this is a good setting or a good start for you to be able to develop that habit of learning. Another thing that I could recommend is to write something. When I started with my career, I was not really a pen tester and there was no way for me to practice writing because that's not my current job. So what I did, I started write-ups in Medium and this was my first post back in 2018. That was my first time hacking a machine. It was a vulnerable machine and I wrote about it. I don't care if my writing is bad. I mean, I used to care back then, but now I don't really care. But back then... My, my my goal was to just put myself out there and write about my progress. And every time I look back at it, especially good sample is this slide, I'm very happy with the way that I was able to progress. And it was not just because I'm good. I'm not even the smartest person, might be uh, the most lacking person even. But I just took in the effort and the community was there to, to support me. Uh, another recommendation is play CTFs or hands-on, uh, and be hands-on, right? As I've mentioned, I play with Hatchets Boys. We, uh, we we participated in the DEFCON CTF Red Team Village. We placed third against uh, that portion, uh, that that competition. Sadly, we're participating remotely, so I remember it was 1:30 a.m. here in the Philippines, and everyone was there in the in the in the afternoon after lunch. There was a disadvantage, but what can you do? Uh, we really like playing CTF, and then we're able to have that very great achievement. So now, how do you get your first gig? If you have no work or IT experience, well, what I recommend is you build on your fundamentals. When you do pen testing, there will always be instances that you have to troubleshoot and your fundamentals will save you. Be hands-on. Learn and have fun while doing it. And lastly, the reason why you are there, connect with the community. Now, if you're working in InfoSec already, maybe try to volunteer within your team that you want to do a vol assessment or a pen test or vol not really do a full-blown pen test but contribute do the dirty work or the grunt work really up to you but just put yourself out there visible to them now lastly you may not get a pen tester role right off the bat and that's okay uh you just need to put in the work and be out there and i'm pretty sure the right people will find you and just make sure that you are putting yourself or making yourself ready concluding my presentation pen testing is a very fun job 
It's not only about hacking, though. It's about communicating the business risk to our customers. It's about being solid in the fundamentals as well and being hands-on is, is very essential. So while you are out there, engage with the community, learn as much as you can, and then give back. And I'm pretty sure you're going to go a long way. So you got this. So that sums up my presentation. Thank you for listening.